Hi, um, so today I'm going to present to you a tool that we've developed uh, that allows you to use the electrophysiology that you've recorded on the probes in order to improve the accuracy of localizing your electrodes in the brain. Um, so using the tools that Pearl and Adam described earlier, we can use the histology in order to uh, reconstruct the location of our probe in the brain and to get an estimate of the different brain regions it passes through. However, there are some inaccuracies in this, and these arise due to various factors. So these include variations in brain sizes between subjects and also different structural distributions. Um, and when we align all of the individual histologies to a common atlas, sometimes these different distributions are not reflected. Uh, there are also inaccuracies in tracing, so the, uh, the dye could either be overexpressed or not expressed enough, which means it's very hard to locate the tip of the probe. Um, and this can also be perpetuated if there's diffusion of the dye. Uh, so we've uh, basically added an extra step where you can use the characteristics of known electrophysiology features of certain brain regions to align your electrodes and basically improve the localization. Uh, so this diagram here uh, outlines the concept. So on the left, we have a single shank, and then we show the brain regions through which it passes through. And this has been estimated using the histology. And on the right, we show the firing rate that's been recorded on this probe. So we can see here that we have a region where there's very low firing rate activity. And based on our knowledge, we can expect that this should come from a region that has basically no neurons. So if we look at the histology, we can see that we have this white area here, which corresponds to an air gap in the brain. So what we want to do is basically align this low firing rate activity with an area that we think it should derive from. So to do this, we can add reference lines, both to the histology and also the electrophysiology, and basically use these as anchor points to shift the location of our probe in the brain. So here we basically shifted the probe up and we can see that this low firing rate activity now corresponds to this white area. So in this example, uh, we've only shifted the, uh, the location of the probe, but in reality, we also want the ability to be able to scale both within regions and also across the probe. So to do this, we've developed a tool as part of the International Brain Lab, and I will now switch and give you a demo of how to use this tool. Um, so when you load in the tool, you should uh, see a display like this, and the GUI is split into three different sections. So on the left-hand side, we have an electrophysiology section, and this basically allows you to view uh, the EFIS data in many different uh, plots and displays. In the center, we have the histology section, and this shows the regions through which your probe traverses. And we have two columns. The one on the left is going to move as you um, align your probe, and the one on the right will stay fixed. And this just provides a reference so you can see how much you've scaled and shifted your electrodes. We also have a coronal slice with, with the electrodes overlaid, and this allows you to see how it kind of moves within the brain. Um, in the electrophysiology panel, we have basically three different panels. Um, so the first shows a feature across a variable. And so in this case, we're showing the firing rate across the duration of the recording. And we have these drop down menus that allow you to change the plot being displayed. So we can, for example, change it to show the cross correlation of the activity across the depth of the probe. Or alternatively, we can display uh, the neurons that have been detected using spike sorting. And here we're showing the amplitude against the, along the depth of the probe. And then the color uh, is indicative of the firing rate of those spikes or clusters. Um, in this display, you can also click on the individual clusters to see the waveform and also the autocorrelogram. Um, in the center, we have line plots, which basically average the activity across the session. So the options are to show the firing rate or the amplitude across the session. And on the right, we basically have probe plots, which overlay features on the, probe, on the geometry of the probe that you're using. Um, so here we're showing the root mean square of the action potential band, but we can also change this to show, for example, the power spectral density in the LF band. Um, so the alignment is all based on these reference lines that I referred to earlier. And so you can add them onto the display by double clicking either on this electrophysiology panel or the histology panel. And it creates a pair of lines which move independently of each other. So I'm now gonna just go through uh, and align this probe and kind of walk you through the process that I take. Um, so the first thing that I notice is at the bottom of the probe, we have this region of high firing rate activity that stops quite abruptly around 1,500 micrometers at the probe. And if we look at the histology, we can see that we have thalamus and then we have a boundary between root, which is this kind of air gap that I was referring to earlier. Um, so I think I'm going to basically put my reference line uh, at the top 
and indicate that this uh, stop in activity is due to this boundary with the, uh, with the thalamus. So once you're happy with where your lines are located, you can press this fit button and it basically shifts um, our electrodes in the brain. So if you focus on this coronal slice here, if we go before and after we've applied the fit, you can see how we've shifted the electrodes up in the brain. Um, so the second or next feature that I'm gonna look at is these like high firing rate bands that I see both here and here. Um, and these are often due to pyramidal cell layers that are in the hippocampus and also layer five of cortex. Um, so gonna add another couple of reference lines and align this one to the center of hippocampus and the higher up one to the center of uh, layer five of the cortex. Um, so once you're happy, you can then press fit. And we can see now that we've not only shifted, but we've also scaled um, our, the distribution of electrodes along the probe. So this central panel shows how much you've scaled the electrodes by, um, and the scaling factor is displayed in the title here. So we can see that uh, we basically scaled the electrodes by a factor of 0.88 along the probe. And between specific regions, different scaling factors can be applied. Um, so once you're happy with your alignment, you can then hit this upload button um, and be prompted to save it. And it will then save the results uh, on your local file system. So the result is a JSON file, which basically contains one entry per channel on your probe. And it has the XYZ position in 3D space and also the brain region and uh, brain region ID that's been assigned to that specific electrode. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, so just to conclude, um, so this is a list of the resources that we have available for this tool. Um, so it's a GitHub repo that's part of our International Brain Lab uh, organization. And we have a wiki that has instructions of different aspects uh, of the GUI. And in particular, there's install instructions that walks you through how to install it on your local computer, how to get started using it. And we provide a sample data set so you can download that and just start playing around with it before even worrying about putting your data in it. Um, and also we provide scripts and information about how to turn your data into the correct format such that it can be read in. Um, yeah, and with that, I'd just like to thank everyone who was involved in creating the tool, our funders, and yeah, thanks for listening.